All right, well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. You are all very valued partners in our efforts to communicate with the, with the public about the current situation on coronavirus. So today, uh, we, the Yakima Health District, are hosting this press conference along with our partners. Today, you'll be hearing from myself, Lillian Bravo, the Director of Public Health Partnerships. We also have representatives from Virginia Mason Memorial. That'll be Dr. Tammy Davenport, who is the Chief Quality Safety Coordinator, as well as a Family Practice Practitioner. Uh, following that, we will be hearing from our partners from Astria Health, John Gallagher, the President and CEO. And following him will be Kevin Chase, the Superintendent for the Educational School District number one, uh, 105. And we will conclude with hearing comments from Horace Ward, who will, is the Operations Manager representing the Yakima Valley Office of Emergency Management. So to begin, we want to make clear that the health of the community is our utmost priority. And for this reason, we want to make sure that we are getting information out to the public in a timely manner, which is what we'll be reviewing today. Currently, there are three confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Yakima County. And one is a presumptive positive, which is awaiting confirmation from the Washington Department of Health Public Health Laboratory. All uh, three of these, in, all three cases are were not hospitalized and all are currently recovering at home. And that also, uh, is the same for the presumptive positive case. That person was not hospitalized and is currently recovering at home. What we would like to make clear is that our goal moving forward is to slow the spread of the disease. Uh, at this point in time, we will likely see the cases of COVID-19 increasing in our community. And for that reason, we wanna emphasize that the goal for all of us is to slow the spread of the disease in our community. With that being said, we have specific recommendations moving forward. And that would be for all community events with more than 100 people, we are recommending to be canceled until further notice. For those that are in the high risk community, we are also recommending that they avoid and do not go to large group gatherings until further notice. And for the community members, we ask that you continue to practice those safe hand washing techniques to continue to avoid, um, avoid visiting different hospitals, long-term care facilities, as well as nursing homes and again, to protect the health of those high-risk individuals and to start practicing social distancing. So if there's events in the community that you need that are not necessary, we ask that you avoid going to those moving forward. Uh, we are at a really critical time in the COVID-19 resp COVID response in Yakima County. If we all do our part to make sure that we are following these different recommendations from public health, <coughs> we can make a, uh, we can ensure that we can sl slow the spread of the disease moving forward. And with that being said, we would again encourage all community members to heed these recommendations from the Public Health Department to ensure that we can slow the spread of the disease in Yakima County. And with that, I will allow Regina Mason Memorial to share their comments as well. We will take questions at the end. Good morning, my name is Tani Davenport. I'm a family physician and chief of quality and safety at Virginia Mason Memorial. Virginia Mason Memorial, is here in our community and we've been working hard with the Yakima Health District and the Department of Health to ensure we're as best prepared for coronavirus as possible. Since for the last two weeks, we have set up an instant command where key leaders in our organization have met daily to make sure we are most up to date on the current changes from the CDC and the prevalence of disease in Yakima County. We treat patients with infectious disease every day and we have for a long time have had great protocols in place to ensure we can minimize the spread of disease. Despite that, COVID-19 is a unique challenge and we daily are making sure that our staff are up to date on what we need to do to best combat this disease. For the most part, we would recommend that most patients who have the minor symptoms of coronavirus, being a fever and cough, stay home. The best thing we can do is make sure that patients who have this disease stay home in safe situations so they do not spread it further in the community. If people have questions or develop worsening symptoms, we're encouraging them to call their primary care provider. At Virginia Mason Memorial and in many of our other clinics in our community, we have set up call centers where RNs can triage those patients and determine if they're sick enough and need to come in to be evaluated. Also, if you need to call someone for Virginia Mason Memorial for primary care, I'd encourage you to call this number, 249-5097, and one of our scheduling spe specialists will help you to make sure you get the care you need. 
there's only a few select patients that are probably going to get the severe symptoms of coronavirus that you've seen in other media. So we want to reassure the public that for most people, you can stay home and this will pass. As Lillian mentioned, if we can slow down the spread of disease, we will prevent the system from being overwhelmed by a large number of acute cases. Still, the best thing that everyone can do is pat practice good hand hygiene. Washing your hands is the most important thing you can do to prevent spread of this virus. Despite all these things, there are still some other changes that needed to happen to ensure that we keep our community as safe as possible. Sometimes these decisions are difficult and we realize the effect on both our patients and their families. Beginning noon today, we are going to implement some visitor restrictions at the hospital to prevent spread of COVID-19. There will be, there will be um, a press release later to specifically address the few exceptions that we're going to have for visitors, but for the most part, we want to make sure that we are eliminating a lot of movement in and out of the hospital to care settings so we can prevent spread. The other change that unfortunately will have to have happen is we are suspending our large and vital volunteer, sports, uh, volunteer workforce at our hospital so that we again can protect not only those volunteers but the community. We are here for the community. We know we're the only hospital in the city of Yakima and our healthcare professionals are dedicated to serve you and we are doing everything we can to make sure we're pre preserving supplies and have the facilities to take care of our community. Thank you. Good morning. My name is John Gallagher and the president and CEO of Astria Health. Um, we've been actively engaged in collaborative relationship with the um, Department of Health um, and the Washington State Hospital Association and sh to ensure that the guidelines to ensure our patients, um, community, and staff members are adhered to. Um, our team is uh, led by our group of physicians and clinicians from our quality and safety department. Um, and we have communicated internally and have on our internal website up-to-date information from uh, the CDC, the World Health Organization. We also have on our external website information uh, from all the different um, organizations. Some of these information is updated more quickly than others, um, but that information is available on our website. We are also encouraging the community to um, make sure that we have uh, proper hand hygiene um, and ensuring to not have folks cluster in large um, gatherings. The, uh, uh, all of our health centers and hospitals will be implementing a new visitation policy where we'll be restricting um, visitors, uh, children in particular, and also um, uh, non-essential visitors will be restricted to all the health centers and hospitals. We also have um, identified uh, site-specific tailored uh, process for the management of suspected COVID-19 patients at each of our clinics, hospitals, and outpatient settings. Uh, we've been testing a drive-up testing process for folks to come in their vehicle and be swabbed and tested uh, for COVID-19. That process has been working very well and pending additional procurement of supplies, we'll be rolling that out at multiple locations throughout the community. Um, if it's an emergent situation um, with uh, uh, significant clinical uh, indications, we recommend calling 911, of course. Um, but for the most basic um, issues associated with uh, fever and cough, we recommend calling your primary care practitioner. Um, at that point in time, the clinics and uh, practitioners will work you through a, an algorithm that has been developed to ensure to recommend staying at home or to um, uh, make arrangements to come in and have testing uh, performed and shortly to recommend um, being able to access testing through one of our drive-through locations. Um, we're also evaluating surge capacity as we've all seen in the paper. Um, I think a lot of the steps that we're going to be able to take uh, together as a community will help uh, flatten the curve. As you all know, the, the capacity issues in the country associated with uh, how many individuals, capacity, beds, et cetera, in the organizations that we have in our community, there is a limited number. And so what we can do as an organization and as a community 
um, is to ensure that we can slow the spread of the disease. If we do that, the same number of people probably will be infected, um, but the timing of when that infection occurs is key. So if we can spread that out, then as folks, if we have a, a wave of folks that get, uh, that get infected, then the capacity associated with um, delivering that care can be handled. So that's the key reason behind um, and the why behind we are asking folks to uh, ensure very strong hand hygiene, ensure that we can keep folks from clustering and, and spreading the disease more rapidly um, because we're seeing it, um, uh, our sister hospitals on the west side of the state are significantly experiencing some problems associated with that. So we hope to get ahead of the curve through these uh, actions. Um, as such, we are continuing to evaluate our surge capacity and contingency plans, including procurement of additional equipment and supplies and staffing needs. We have been working for a number of weeks now with local and state and federal agencies to assess the needs and communicate asked to be able to expand services and meet the community needs should those situations occur. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Chase. I'm the superintendent for Educational Services District 105. Um, I'm a regional representative for education institutions from Kittitas, Yakima, part of Grant and part of Click Attack County. Um, my message to the community and the public is that your schools are paying very, very, very close attention to what's going on in terms of uh, student safety, parent safety, and staff safety. Uh, we work uh, hand in hand. We meet regularly through video conferencing. We've met three times this week as a region. All the superintendents get together to talk about what are the precautions, what are the steps we need to take. I would let you know that the governor has, as we all know, has closed three counties on the west side of the state. And what he is asking of those districts is two things only. One, provide nutritional meals, breakfast and lunch, to students in need. And two, how can you, um, the second thing that he's asking for is can you provide child care for first responders or folks that are in the medical field? Right, as uh, portrayed earlier, this is going to be a real crisis for the medical health care community, overrun with, uh, with work. And if they are responsible for caring for their children when uh, schools are closed, then we feel like they may be out of the workforce. And we need them in the workforce to maintain uh, the health care systems that are in place. So those are the two things that the governor has asked for. I can tell you that um, those three counties are just the start. There are other counties that are already planning to shut down um, on their own voluntarily without a governor's um, decree and that I think uh, you'll see shortly a statewide decree that all schools are shut. And uh, you can expect it to see it from uh, like next week until uh, April 24th and then school resumes the following Monday depending on the situation. But Know this, schools are well in tune. We're in communication every single day with the governor's office, every single day with OSPI, and every single day with each other. And so we're gonna do the very best we can to keep your children and staff safe and make sure that we help flatten the curve. That's the whole part. Our job is to make sure we can contain the spread and do the best we can to help out the healthcare professionals. And that's our role. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Horace Ward. I'm the operations manager with the Acma Valley Emergency Management. Um, we've been working really closely with the health district, the state, and our federal partners uh, throughout this whole uh, event so far. Uh, we hope to continue those collaborative efforts to, uh, to ensure the safety of the public. Um, as everybody's kind of mentioned here, um, there's potential uh, for folks to, to be at home for an extended period of time. Uh, what we're advising uh, is that the public prepare themselves to be in home, uh, you know, for up to two weeks, uh, minimizing their amount of time out in public at stores. Uh, this ties into a lot of our efforts elsewhere in uh, getting folks ready for natural disasters. Um, so with that, we ask that people have non-perishable foods at home, um, prescription and non-prescription medicine uh, that'll last them that duration, um, diapers, wipes, things for your children, uh, just getting all those things that you'd have to go to the store regularly for uh, and make sure that you have some of them in your home uh, so that if you do end up in your home for a, a period of time, uh, you're able to do that and uh, again, limit your time uh, in public to help uh, slow this down. Um, as well, uh, first responders uh, have begun using new measures to uh, help protect themselves uh, and the public. 
Uh, that starts at 911. When somebody calls in, 911 is going to, uh, to ask them specific questions about their symptoms, um, fever, cough, shortness of breath, things like that. If those patients uh, meet that criteria, then they'll advise the first responders and uh, they will limit the amount of uh, people that are engaging with that person uh, just so that we limit the spread among the first responder community and again in the public. Um, that's, what we, uh, that's what we have for today. I'll let Lillian uh, finish up here. Um, so as you all have heard, uh, we're all working very closely every single day, staying in communication to make sure that we are staying ahead of, of what's going on and making sure that we can collaborate to slow the spread of the disease. Uh, with that being said, we are all as a system working together, but each and every one of our community members also has a role to play to ensure that they're taking their own precautions to ensure the safety of themselves, their family, their neighbors, and our community. So uh, with that, we do have a few minutes for questions and answers, and I'll let uh, Ryan uh, identify who can ask the question, and please, when, when you ask the question, identify who you're wanting to respond to. Thank you. <clears throat> Any um, hi, my name is Priscilla Hogan. I'm a reporter with the KNDO station, the NBC station. And um, are you guys releasing information about how many people have been tested so far? At this point in time, the information that we're releasing is those that, that are confirmed cases. With, uh, with the testing being more widely available, providers are able to uh, send out more testings than the information that we have. So the most uh, current information will be those three confirmed cases of the one presumptive positive in Yakima County. Kevin, I have a question for you, Kevin Chase, <coughs> from KIT. Did, do I hear you saying that you anticipate schools to close next week? Did I hear you say that? You, you did hear, I, I can't say that it's gonna be in Yakima County or Kittitas County, but on the west side, I believe there's going to be multiple counties closing on their own. Is that a message to parents that parents need to prepare, start preparing for, you know, kids being out of school here in Yakima? I would tell parents to prepare for that. Absolutely. And you say a two-week shutdown? No, I'm saying a five to six-week shutdown. Five to six weeks. Like it, it could, uh, like just like King County right. starts next week and go through April 24th. 24, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, John, John Gallagher, um, yes, can you tell us about the locations where the drive-up testing is happening? Um, some of our viewers would like to know that. Certainly. So uh, we've been modeling that at the Top Finish Hospital uh, currently and mm -hmm. at uh, a couple of our clinics as well. Um, so we've been um, modeling that, testing it, uh, working out the bugs uh, per se, and we'll be rolling that out to multiple locations throughout the valley, and we'll get that information out on our website as soon as it's done. And I also have another question. Um, what about expecting mothers? How can they protect themselves? Certainly. Um, uh, clinically, uh, would you like to handle that one? Sure. So, I mean, expected mothers are at risk not only for COVID-19, but we're in the middle of influenza season as well. So the best thing they can do is stay away from people who are sick, who have a fever and cough, and again, wash their hands. So that's the best thing that they can do. Uh, Emily Goodell, Cat KU. I have another follow-up question for Kevin. Uh, so you said that uh, Yakima parents should start preparing in the event that we also have to close schools for five to six weeks. How soon might they anticipate that could be happening? I hate to do conjecture, but I would say <clears throat> my guess is next week we will, uh, the governor will have a closed statement for everybody. That's my guess. And are you uh, prepared in the eventuality to feed the children and the other things that Inslee has asked that the Seattle schools do during the shutdown? Yeah, everybody's preparing for that. It's, it's not something new for most districts. We actually run summer lunch programs all the time. So what normally will happen is they'll designate sites across the community that lunches will be available. Kids can go and it'll be like a grab and go situation. Grab a sack, grab your food, and, and then leave the area. But we do that all the time in lots of places. So. We're ready for that. And how will this affect the school year? Well, here's what I would think would happen. So at this point, if they do close between now and say April 24th, the kids could come back if everything's correct, schools will open back up, and I would expect them to have to go till at least uh, June 19th. After that, uh, it's possible that they don't have to make up any more days past that, and that those days will be wiped off the books like during an emergency closure. That doesn't preclude school districts, though, if they would like to, to continue education after June 19th. But I guess, my guess is that the state will only require they go till June 1-9. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kenny. 
plants. Is this an overreaction? No. I mean, I think that if you look at all the data and what we can see in both China and Italy's developments, I think the best thing we can do is do the best prevention we can, practice all these public health measures, and hopefully we can flatten that curve so we don't overwhelm our healthcare facilities. Uh, Ryan Rogers with KIMA. Uh, this is for uh, Mr. Gallagher. Yes, sir. Um, we've gotten a lot of phone calls and emails about this, so I have to ask. Um, is there any possibility of possibly reopening the, the Yakima Hospital? Uh, we've been in discussions with uh, local, uh, state, and federal uh, agencies, um, anticipating the, the potential need for the facility um, over a month ago. So we've had some discussions, um, and those are still ongoing. And this might be for Horace or somebody else. Um, in the event there is like a widespread outbreak here in the Yakima County, what are some possible quarantine sites, some plans that are being in, in talks? Um, that one might be better answered by the health district. Uh, okay. I know that we are, are currently putting together uh, some contingency plans for that just in case. Uh, so we've been identifying locations throughout the county. Uh, that could be opened in the potential that we do that. Um, but right now the recommendation is that people uh, stay at home if they're able to stay at home. Yes, and uh, just much with, break, with any emergency planning, I know that the, uh, the fairgrounds have always been an option for, for future uh, possible quarantine sites, but those, again, will be ongoing discussions as the situation evolves. Could, could you go over the recommendations that you kind of talked about at the, at the beginning? Just Limiting events and events. Yes, so uh, we are recommending that any events with over 100 individuals be canceled until further notice. Uh, we are also recommending that any non-essential meetings also be rescheduled. And then for those that are high-risk individuals, so those being those that are, that are older than 60, pregnant, or have any underlying health conditions, avoid uh, large gatherings moving forward as well. And then for the general public, we are asking to also take care of uh, those high-risk individuals by practicing social distancing and practicing these safe hand washing techniques that we've discussed. Do you anticipate a hotline or anything like that? For, yes, yeah, so at this point in time, the Department of Health does have a hotline specifically for it, the, the public who has questions related to COVID-19. I can provide that uh, hotline in written form shortly after this press conference. Um, let's with the Yakima Herald. This is kind of a weird question. I apologize for it, but we, um, I've actually been hearing from a lot of readers who say that the advice that's coming from the state and the local levels doesn't match their reality on the ground. Like, people are saying stay home if you're sick, but employers are not allowing people to stay home if they're sick. Um, Y'all are saying, like, sanitize, but anyone who's been to any store in <laughs> anywhere knows there's no toilet paper, there's no hand sanitizer. Um, canned food yesterday was starting to go as well. Do you have any guidelines for people who aren't able to follow the guidelines that you guys are putting in there? Um, yeah, so I think this points again to the, the need for us all to practice this calm caution. So uh, just making sure that if you are going out to purchase materials for your own emergency preparedness efforts to take what you need for two weeks and that's what we'll, that's like in any point in time throughout the year um, and avoid some of the stock, any uh, additional uh, materials that are being purchased. Uh, we're really recommending just the two week time frame in case you are um, experiencing any of those symptoms to need to stay home for about two weeks. I'd also just like to add that hand washing with soap and water for 20 seconds is sufficient. Thank you. Uh, last question, yes. Um, I'm more curious about, I know you're holding this conference in Spanish in a few minutes. Um, I'm curious about what else you're doing to reach the Spanish-speaking population in the county. Yeah, so that's always our first priority at the Yakima Health District. We recognize that a large portion of our community, over 40% of them are Spanish speakers, so every single one of our communications that go, goes out is translated into Spanish. And we'll also be working closely with community-based organizations as well as Spanish media to make sure that our message is being heard. Um, and with that, that's all the time that we have. We will have to transition over to the Spanish media conference. Uh, if, so thank you all so much for coming. Uh, and we will have handouts with some of the talking points that the organization said. Thank you. The preceding program was a production of YPAC, Yakima Public Affairs Channel. If you have any questions or would like to purchase a copy of this meeting, please call 575-6092.
and thank you for watching YPAC.